Okay, we're going to talk about section 3.4. Um, chapter 3 in this text is all about um, sort of solving equations, and in particular linear equations. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what the form for a linear equation is. Um, you can probably guess it has something to do with lines. Um, and we'll talk through some strategies to solve it, and we'll do some early examples in this video. We'll do some more complicated examples, I think, in uh, video number two. Um, so first and foremost, the form for a linear equation <clears throat> Technically, this is a linear equation in one variable. Um, but we won't be quite as specific as that in our labeling. So the form is going to be anything that can be rewritten as ax plus b equals 0. And so this is where x is our variable. So, you know, if this is an equation, obviously we need an equal sign. We're going to need a variable. So in this case, ax. That's what we would try to solve for, if we're trying to solve the equation, which is what we're going to do in this section. Um, and then a and b are constant values. Right, so some number values. So a and b are numbers, um, x is a variable. In theory, a and b can be any kind of numbers. Um, what's going to happen for us here, I mean, in theory, they could be you know, fractions, decimals, all, so, all sorts of things. So in, I'll make a little note. So in this particular section, 3.4, as far as the pre-algebra book goes, um, chapter 3 comes before chapter 4, obviously. Um, chapter 4 is about fractions. So everything in, in section 3.4, all of our equations, um, all of our solutions should be whole numbers. Um, so we shouldn't get any kind of fractions or decimal type answers in this section. In theory, right, the, the fraction and decimal sections come after this. So the book is not trying to sort of sneak in um, right fraction answers before we've really sort of officially gone through them. Um, in general, certainly you could get fraction answers, decimal answers. You could get any kind of answers for this type of equation. Um, it's just in this particular section in the book, just based on the order of things, we're going to expect to get whole numbers. That's kind of good news, right? It will, in theory, help us a little bit and make our, our solutions maybe a little bit simpler. Um, so let's talk through a general strategy for solving these equations. Um, so in theory, right, our goal is we'd like to get x equals some number, right? I mean, that's the goal. Solve for the equation. What's the value for x? x equals blank. 10, negative 15, positive 2, whatever. Um, so how to get there uh, depends, right? The idea with any equation um, is you can sort of do any math operation you want. You just have to do the same thing to both sides. So for equations, we can perform any math operation. Right, so for us that's, you know, in some sense going to be our kind of big four plus minus times and divide, right, addition, subtraction, any of those four. In theory, you could start to do things like raise it to powers. Um, these are just linear equations, so they don't have powers, right? Part of what makes this a linear equation is that the x doesn't have an exponent on it. It's just sort of x to the 1, um, right? So being a linear equation means we're not really going to have to deal with any kind of exponents or, or roots or anything like that. Um, that would come later. 
Um, so in this case, in theory, right, for any equation, we can kind of do any kind of math thing. So for us, this is going to be sort of plus, times, minus, and divide. Um, and the catch is, right, so we can perform any, mop, ma any math operation um, provided, right, as long as we do the same thing to both sides right so I always kind of think of an equation you know like a seesaw or teeter totter or something right it has to stay balanced I guess you know whatever Thanos would like it um, so I can't I have my equal sign kind of as a balance in the middle so so I, I don't want to do anything that sort of unbalances it and tips it one way or the other if I'm gonna for example sort of add to one side I need to sort of add the same amount to the other side to keep it balanced Again, this sounds a lot like Thanos, uh, but don't worry, uh, we're not going to get rid of half of the numbers in the universe or anything like that. Um, so what's our general strategy here, right? So this is some of the stuff that like we can do, but let's try to be a little bit more thoughtful about how we would approach something. Um, so my suggestion as far as you know, when we see this, what should we do first? Um, my suggestion number one is distribute. clear away any parentheses or brackets, right? So if you have any kind of parentheses or brackets, um, one of the first things you're going to want to do is do multiplication, distribute, um, get those things expanded and sort of clear them out. Um, step number two, once you've done that is, so on each side of your equation, combine like terms. So once you've sort of distributed any sort of parentheses out of there, in theory, what you're going to end up with is you've kind of taken really the sort of order of operations aspect out of here, right? We've kind of done our multiplication stuff first. Then we're going to look to combine any of the terms we can together, right? So on each side, combine like terms. Um, once you've done that in theory, right, you should kind of have at most kind of like one x term on each side and like one number term. You shouldn't really have more than four total terms, kind of one of each type on each side. Um, so then what you want to do is sort of pick a side and you want to move your sort of x values, your variable values to one side and then move your numbers to the other. Right, it doesn't particularly matter. I think the intuitive thing is usually to sort of shift your variables to the left and then your numbers to the right, so you'd end up with like x equals number. But in theory, right, an equal sign, right, it, it doesn't particularly matter which way you look at it. You know, you could have the variable on the left or the variable on the right. Um, just, you know, from uh, reading English, we read English from left to right, so then I you know, I think for the most part what that kind of means is your your eye wants to sort of naturally move from left to right, but there isn't anything wrong with having, you know, six equals x as kind of your final answer. That's also totally fine. Um, so once we do that, once we get all of our sort of uh, variable terms on the one side, the number of terms, what we're going to do is combine like terms again. Right, and so what you're going to end up with at that point is, you know, something x equals some number, right? Uh, 3x equals 27, you know, negative 6x equals 18, something like that. So your final step is divide away the number in front of your variable, and then you'll be left with x equals a number. You'd be left with your solution. Right, so that's kind of our generic strategy. Um, I'm going to pause this video and in part two we'll sort of run some examples.